I don't doubt my ability ever. Um, like, it, it doesn't matter to me who says what, whether it's my wife, kids, colleagues, peers, clients, doesn't matter to me. When I first started my business, I was probably working but anywhere between 14 and 18 hours a day. When you look at that, any human that does that, ultimately, there has to be a really strong why. When I was in hospital, I don't think I was in care for my family which is a bit that saddened me afterwards. It actually, you know, I thought, oh God, like all the things that could go wrong in your life and you were sat in a hospital and actually all you were thinking about was work. Meet Palm Bengal. Started his business career at the age of 17 with all the enthusiasm and confidence you would expect. But along that journey, he learned that you need to take a step back. Don't react with emotion to business situations that come along the way and by learning those lessons and having a network of peers around him he has grown a successful portfolio of businesses and has recently expanded into restauranteering as well with the clear business plan clear exit strategies this is a young entrepreneur you can learn a lot from i'm richard osborne and this is drive the business podcast from ukbf Palm, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you for having me here. It's uh, very welcome. First question, because I, when I sort of picked up, it was very specifically said like it, uh, living with your mum. So, but my mum and dad. Mum and dad. Yeah, That's mom and the dad, bit yeah. that I wanted to yeah. pick up on. Yeah, really. yeah. But both my parents. Uh, so, yeah. so dad's yeah. present. So you work in yeah. at home there. You started out um, sat there at a desk, looking at a phone, thinking what's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Um, I'm not really a person that sits around. You know, yeah. I'll always go after opportunities. Yeah. Um, it's, it's that that's that's the way I am. I'm always looking out for opportunities. I'm l always looking to put things together to to get opportunities. Um, so I wasn't sat. I wouldn't say I was sat there looking at a telephone. Yeah. Um, I was started my my business in a bedroom, but I was out looking, hunting for business, speaking to people, telling people what I do, telling people what I can help them with, um, and and continue, continuously looking for opportunities. Yeah. And the how long, because you've gone from having a paycheck, so you've had the regular income, how long before you got your first piece of income where you could pay yourself? Four months. Four months. So that that's... Um, you you was in a fortunate position because you was living with your parents, mm -hmm. but at the same time, that's a long period of time to go without income. The how do you keep yourself going during that time to make sure you're confident you've made the right decision? Um, strategy, yeah, confidence. Yeah. I was always confident in my ability. Yeah. Um, that I do, I I don't doubt my ability ever. No. Um, like. It, it doesn't matter to me who says what, whether it's my wife, kids, colleagues, peers, clients, doesn't matter to me. I'm confident in my ability to be able to deliver on something and I don't care who you are, that you ain't taking that out of me. Um, so what, for me, I knew, like, if I keep going with this, I will get clients. This will be successful. Um, and I'm very confident. Um, and I think actually over at the beginning, it was cocky confidence. Um, now, later on down the line in business, I think I've tried to drop the cockiness out of it and just be confident, but quietly. Yeah. Just know that actually I know I'm able to handle this. I know my ability. I know I'm confident enough to deliver on the next five year strategy even though people might look in and go guy's crazy the listening to you as you were saying confidence there there is a danger in as you use the term cocky confidence so i was thinking overconfidence yeah there there's a balance and the um asking a question asking a question in a certain way how do you manage that? And I'm asking it in a way that because it could be taken that 
Um, you could be overconfident uh, or you could be managing that balance well. So it's a very open question, but how do you, how do you manage it then? I, I think it's knowing your abilities. I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. Yeah. And just because I'm not good at it doesn't mean I can't do it. I'm just not good at it. I know that other people need that skill. So I think my con confidence comes from my ability to know that if I know I'm not good at something, I'll, I'll step back and go, it's not my bag. I can, I can handle it, but actually we need some experts in the room. Like we need someone else to do with this. So you have to outgrow. You kind of have to outgrow yourself like, and be able to go, I'm, I'm good, but I'm not that good. Um, and you have to accept the fact that other people have skill sets that are better than yours in certain areas. I might be a business owner, but it doesn't mean that I'm an expert in every single part of the business. Now I'm confident I'm a good business owner and I can coordinate everything the way I need to, but I'm a good enough business owner to be able to sit down at a table and know when someone else is cleverer than me. And when they know more than me and, and, and know that actually I need to extract some information here, I need to utilize their skills, but I need to be able to manage the process because I know they're uber confident in what they do, but they don't know what needs to go on around them to make them successful. And I'm, I would say I'm, I'm pretty good at that. There's a big push around mentorship. For me, I have a, a board of non-exec directors who are years my senior that I gained that knowledge of. But when I said earlier, I wish I'd learned some of the things I know now earlier, I've only really started picking it on when I have board meetings that I'm accountable to. Of course. Uh, the Do you have that similar sort of environment within your business or do you have a network of people that you're able to learn or gain some of this input from, from their own, their experiences have been through it? Or is it organic? So I don't have uh, non-exec directors. I don't have board members. Um, I do have coaches um, and mentors that I work with. I also have a very strong network of business owners, um, senior directors around me that, you know, I regularly go out with dinners, lunches. I communicate with them. Um, I'm, I'm an avid, I'm an avid reader. Um, <laughs> I say I'm a reader, audiobooks. Um, but that is the new reading. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm very. If I don't understand something, I want to understand how it works. I don't need to understand it in depth, but I need to understand how it works on a broad level so I can communicate with someone about it. That's very important to me. Um, I'm numbers driven. Being a quantity surveyor by by trade, we we manage numbers in the construction industry. So if I didn't understand how to do that within my own business, that would be silly. Um, so I'm I'm lucky to be a numbers person. Um, it's a skill set that I have. Um, but I yeah I do have a good network of people around me that I talk to. If I'm having problems, I sit back, I reflect, I speak to other people. I read about it, um, you know, and I, I think that that's the educational piece behind it is that I'm always trying to understand what journey other people are on, where they want to go, what their strategy is, um, because everyone has a different strategy. Yeah, they do. Uh, and speaking and on strategy, I, I've taken an interpretation from this um, in that you come into a QS, uh, quantity surveying, with a element of youth to yourself uh, that can lead to innovation because you've, you've got the traditional QS part, which you picture the sort of pinstripe suits and the clipboards and the paper <laughs> and the calculator, things like that. Um, and then you've taken an online platform, um, which I'm not going to show my wife because she'll be all over there. I want to quote for this piece of land and that piece of land. And all that <laughs> but you've literally taken something and launched an online platform for people in uh, seeking private uh, builders, um, commercial builders to literally build up and get estimates and quotes for builds and things from there, which I thought was that's pretty innovative um, from that side. And I wonder whether if you was uh, being mentored by people in your industry 
who'd been in your industry for years, whether you would have launched that? I have got people in my industry that I've been coached and mentored yeah. from. You know, I've got people around me that have been in industry for 40 plus years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're, ex they're experts in the industry for longer than I've been born yeah. and alive. But ultimately, just because you go and get advice from someone doesn't mean you have to take all the advice. Um, it's all about cherry picking the bits that you need that fit in with the strategy that you have. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm very big on strategy. I'm, I'm very big on strategy. We do strategy every single year, Christmas. You know, our December is spent strategizing the next year. We have three, five, 10 year strategies and, and business plans. Um, so I might go and speak to someone and they might, I might have a two hour lunch with them, talk to them about lots and lots of things. I might only take one little snip out of that that actually fits in the strategy. Um, I have a saying, and uh, me and my wife always say it, just stay in your own lane. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not about what everyone else is doing. Yes, we do market research and we look at what everyone else is doing, but I'm not bothered. This is our strategy. We're going to go at this strategy. We know our business. We understand our business. And if I have to cherry pick bits off, to bring it into my lane, that's fine. But I'm not moving out of my lane to go into someone else's lane just because they feel as if their lane is the right lane. Um, I think a lot of people nowadays go, oh, they seem to be doing well, really well. Let's do that as well. Um, they, they seem to be, you know, he bought a new Bentley and he's got a dry cleaning business. So I'm going to have a dry cleaning business. Not interested. You know, I will go to him and speak to him about his dry cleaning business and understand why it's so successful and then cherry pick them bits to put them into my business um, rather than just trying to do everything and be everything to everyone. Um, I think it's really important to cherry pick them bits of information you need and bring them into your strategy rather than keep changing your strategy. How do you pick and choose the relevant parts that are not just affirmation for, of a decision that you may subconsciously have already made so within that um, there's a danger of just just wanting people to confirm that what you're saying is right as opposed to sometimes the right advice may be what you not want to hear so how do you pick and choose what isn't affirmation this is really um this really good question because for many years, I used to listen, but not listen. Yeah. So I used to be sat there like, I know what the answer is. I just want you to confirm what I know what the answer is. Yeah. Um, but now, I'd probably say, probably last four years, five years, I've actually understood that I just need to keep this shut and I need to just listen. And then I need to figure out what bits of that are relevant rather than going into something with my own assumptions as to what is going to work. I already know what I think is going to work, but actually now I don't go into any meeting or any conversation thinking that I know what the answer is because I've learned that my answers are not always the best answers. And often I end up with in situations where I'm, I'm taught a lesson and a very good one. Um, but that's come over years. Um, I wish someone had told me that when I was, 24, 25, told me to keep my mouth shut and use my ears. I think it also, for me, it's something that comes with experience and um, age. Yeah. In the sense. Maturity. That, maturity, that's the word yeah. I was avoid, eluding me. <laughs> the, uh, because <clears throat> going back to taking things personally, I, if I look back at my younger years, I was afraid of being wrong. Now, uh, if I'm in a room of people, and I turn and say, right, I'm thinking of doing this. You know, there would be a bunch of people who go, that's a great idea. Uh, and not in a negative way, but I kind of dismiss that mm -hmm. because if they're already telling me what the, I'm just like, yeah, Richard, that's a great idea. It's like, brilliant. Okay, great. There's nothing you can tell me for me to learn from. But then the other bunch of people that are going, it ain't going to work. Why not? Um, oh, that's a really crap idea. Why is that? Uh, and 100%. I get an energy out of the negativity, dare I say it. But the people who are turning around saying, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. 
they're the ones that are giving you all that pieces of information that if you if if in your mind you can turn and go yeah actually okay i might need to address that or i might need to address that that's where you build your your, your foundations from i absolutely agree um I think sometimes the worst meetings are the ones that you go into where you think you know what the answer is and everyone goes, yeah, that's the answer. And you, I, I walk out of the meetings and my, I was hoping to make that better. <laughs> um, and we actually got nothing out of that. Um, mm. So yeah, I think it's, it's very much about the people that, um, where you make mistakes and where yeah. people challenge you and people question you. They're the sort of people that I try and keep around me. I'm, we're, I'm very lucky. Um, myself and Karen, my wife, we're, we're very different people. Mm. Um, and a lot of the time, she's my sounding board. She's like, I'm like, I want to do this. I do like, so I'm like, reach for the stars. And she's like, that's wild. Like, are you sure? <laughs> and she's like, maybe bring it down a peg. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is where we're going to. And she sometimes brings me back down to earth, which I need. Mm. Um, and she's my sounding board a lot of the time. And I have a few people, I'm lucky to have a few people that are are my sounding boards. Now, you have to be very careful with that because your sounding boards have to be people that understand the scenario, the situation, the environment, the people, you know, that I love my parents to bits, but would I ever speak to them about business ever? No. Just wouldn't because I know they're not going to give me the valuable insight that I need into strategic decisions in business. Would I go to my parents about a challenging situation with an individual or people? Yeah, probably, because that's life experience. You know, I sometimes speaking to people on an employee level. Uh, how would you expect this to be handled? So it's about going to the right people for the right advice, Get having your sounding boards right. Um, you know, you can't go to your doc doctor and ask them to look at your accounts. Like you just can't you have to go to the right people for the and ensure that your sounding boards are, are, are the are the right people in the right places the you just mentioned that you run annual uh sort of strategy um team days with the be the right yeah way, it? Yeah. yeah management <clears throat> yeah management and days. uh and that's clearly led as you've built up a portfolio of ventures within the business as you've been growing it and the one of the other areas that you've then branched into hospitality um which is a bit left field compared to so you, you've spoken about you've stayed within your lanes you've stayed within the thing uh, the business ventures that you have are very much within property property and construction yes. property and construction yeah um and then you've gone into restauranteering mm -hmm. what led to that I think we decided that we were going to go into that post COVID. Um, post, so COVID was difficult for everyone. Um, it, it was difficult for everyone in lots of different ways. Um, and I think at the point that I made the decision to go into food and beverage, so F and B brands, was when I realised that actually I'm in one industry, and I'm not sure whether. You know, if something was to go wrong in this industry, what what diversification have I got to enable me to grow um, and ensure that I'm spread a little bit more than I am now? And the second bit of that is strategy, because our business strategy for Wing Kings, which is our F&B brand, is entirely different, entirely different to our construction and property background. You know, my property portfolio and my property business is all about buy, hold, pay down, pension. My construction businesses, they are effectively, I wouldn't say lifestyle businesses, but strategy businesses that we will continue to grow and, and build forward. My F&B brand is all about not, Take, we don't take anything out of it. We put everything back into it. We, we reinvest in order to build a business that we can ultimately create into a global brand that effectively we will sell to another 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 business when we reach the goals that we want to reach. 
So all of our businesses have different strategies. And I think when I sat down, looked at the F&B brand and what I wanted to achieve, it was giving me a piece of strategy that I didn't already have within the businesses that I owned. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons why I decided to, to to go into hospitality, food and beverage, because I was like, well, actually, this is very different to what I do. Um, it's been a massive learning and I've taken bits out of that business to bring them into my other businesses. Um, but I, w- I would still say I'm, I'm very much in my lane. Um, I'm just in a different market now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much in, in a, in a different market. I know what value I can bring to businesses, um, especially growing businesses. I know what value I bring to, to any growing business, any startup business, because I've experienced that. I want to now gain experience at the other end, which is mergers, acquisitions, sale, um, and, and doing bits, bits and bobs like that. Um, so I think it, it just fitted in nicely at the time with the strategy that I was looking to kind of take on. I get bought opportunities for, for businesses to, to buy, to merge with, um, you know, to invest in, I would probably say every fortnight, I've got something different that lands on my desk. But, you know, 95% of opportunities I'll never take because they just don't fit in with what I want to do. The It's very refreshing to hear, and I'd like to ask how that evolved. You're very clear as to what the end goal is for each venture that you're involved in. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about your most recent <clears throat> venture, so uh, mm-hmm. Winkings, yeah. the I completely get go back more than twenty five years ago. I was I I worked in on the fringes of construction within the food and beverage, right, <laughs> in the, okay. the hospitality areas, the bar and servery, the kitchen areas, things like that. I, I would worked on designing those and then um, getting involved in project management for that. So I, it's, a, it's an industry which I've got a bit of a f- affinity for. And I completely get that because I understand how the large restaurant chains operate in their acquisition strategies and growth strategies. And your strategy for that is very closely aligned with how they operate, Mm -hmm. Um, which I find refreshing listening to because the, and uh, this uh, this is a very complimentary enough of somebody who's a relatively young age has that nailed. The, that you've, you, you get it and you have that. Rolling back to when you first started, I, I can't imagine. So, I in the your motivation and drive for starting your business at that point wasn't so finely tuned as I'm going to do this and this is my exit. This is my end goal for it. So, at what point do you grad, do you develop that and, and realize? And what was the trigger? What happened for you to sit there and think this is where to to a point where you have that knowledge where we're going to do wingings, this is how we're going to do it, this is what our strategy is going to be, and this is how we exit that industry at a set point in time when we achieve this, that, and the other. When I first started my business, I was probably working 16, but anywhere between 14 and 18 hours a day, pretty much seven days a week. Now, when you look at that, and you look at any human that does that, ultimately, there has to be a really strong why. Otherwise, you just end up losing the will to live because you're like, every day, same thing, grafting, hard work. Where's the end to this? Uh, What is, where is the end to this? And I've probably done this for five, six years with just churning, 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 constantly, targets, targets, targets. There's no end. And, you know, I had I had a health scare, and when when I, after that health scare, I was like, no, "This ain't right." Like, it's something not, I I get I'm a hard worker. I get I can do fourteen, sixteen, eighteen hour days. I've done longer than that. You know, I've I've done thirty six hours no sleep. I've I've done that, but actually, it's not sustainable. What's the goal here? 
what's the exit here? Because you can't just do this for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. You just can't carry on like this. So at that point is when is the point at which I sat back and I was like, we need a strategy. The why needs to be stronger. Why are we actually doing this? What, where are we trying to get to? And what is the plan? Um, so, you know, prior to that, my business strategy and planning was 12 months, two years, three years. And then I realized that actually this needs to be a five year and a 10 year. And there has to be something at the end of it because you now ask me to get out of bed on a Monday morning and work 80, 90, 100 hours in that week. I'll do it. It doesn't matter to me. I'll do it simply because I know, I know where I want to be in 10 years. And if that 100 hour week is going to get me to 10 years, to where I, where I see, mentally see it, and visually see that in 10 years time it's good with me don't mind mm. so yeah it took, it took a bit of learning but there's only so long you can burn the candle at both ends and yeah. that's in exactly what i was doing the um health scares are an unfortunate event that do help focus the mind 100 percent. the um i mean i'd like not like <clears throat> know the impact of yours to, to relate the um i had an anxiety attack during the credit crunch where literally the bank was about sent me an email saying they're going to withdraw our overdraft and sink the business but the, the two months into covid um i was in hospital for a month at the start of covid and my wife was advised that there was an opportunity that i might not be coming out of hospital uh not opportunity but they that you know i might not have um, survived it at the start. Um, interestingly, at no point whilst I was in hospital was I worrying about the business. The um, all I thought about was family and the impact that I'm meant to be. You know, I'm keeping the roof over their head, and I was thinking, have I got the right insurances in place? When if I don't come out of here, <laughs> these sort of thoughts, yeah. but not what's going on day to day in the business. The um, having that focus in mind also you work with your wife um the as well so those in there with, with that situation what were those sort of conversations like at that point that led to you saying we need to we need to have a strategy around this we need to have an end goal what are we doing it for yeah so i think it was entirely different for me when i was in hospital i don't think i was thinking about my family no. which is a bit that saddened me afterwards it actually you know i thought god like all the things that could go wrong in your life and you were sat in a hospital and actually all you were thinking about was work mm. um i was disappointed in myself at that point it like really disappointed because everyone always says there's more to life than work and your business and there is absolutely you know i've got mm. two young kids um, there is more to life than that. Um, and I think going through that experience made me realize that it's not just about work all the time. And sometimes I need them reality checks because I get, I'm so deep focused. I'm so like, I, I go so deep into things that I lose track. Like you are just, you know, people have to, pull me in and go you know you've been doing that for like two hours like yeah. I'm, I'm that type of person i'm just a deep focused person i think after that my wife so karen was just like do we need this do we need any of this and i was like yeah she was like no like do our daughters need any of this and i was like yeah they do and she was like, did, did you have any of this? And I was like, no, I didn't. And she was like, how was your childhood? I was like, it was good. I was like, and she was basically like taking me through like, your daughters need your time. They're going to remember the, the time spent with you, not the things that you bought for them or anything like that. And I think that was a hard, really hard pill to swallow because I had strategized every single other bit of my life apart from my life. 
in its personal circumstances or or, or p- my my personal part and then I come to realize that actually the long strategy is what I want but the short-term stuff can't be at detriment to my family um, which it was always being it was always my time detriment was always at the detriment of my wife and my kids mm. um, and I realized that you know there's certain things that I'm not going to be able to buy back now. So if I have to rearrange a meeting to go to a sports day, I'll do it. doesn't matter. Um, if I have to rearrange a meeting to take a day off because my daughters want me at something, I'll do it now. It doesn't matter. You know, I just hope that the other person understands and I'll be, you know, I'm, I'm very respectful about how I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, my my diary's now managed a lot better. So, you know, my I pre plan when the important family days are and there's no like the, the you know, the team no. Don't yeah. don't book anything in his diary for them because he's not gonna do it. Yeah. It's so important. Um clearly listen to the um the impact your wife has on maintaining that balance the i've spoken to a previous guest here who's uh, lost his marriage due to being very focused mm-hmm. uh, and, and i can entirely understand why that happens yeah and and it's more common than anybody would like to acknowledge because you are so fo- you, the you're focusing your mind on building um something and you know in the side of your mind as well that that, that, that that it will benefit your family you're providing but and i speak from experience here you lose sight of that and you just got your head down and just like this is important this is important. they'll appreciate it in the future they appreciate it in the future but the reality is the future hits, might never be there yeah it hits you like a train when something happens and, and just puts it smack in your face that actually the future might not be there that, uh, and you can't take those years back um, either. The uh, It's good to hear that your wife is so focused, that my wife is. She calls it um, our ball of love. Mm-hmm. And, she'll t- and she, she'll say that I like it's that. getting... <laughs> yeah. I really like that. Uh, and sometimes it gets chips and cracks in it and it gets dirty and muddy or cloudy and things because it's not getting the attention that it needs. And um, that's her way of... Met- uh, sort of metaphor a metaphor for the relationship in the home life and uh, the uh, so many business owners people start up in business um the in lose connections not just with family but friends as well with um and drift apart from that uh sounds like a great wife there yeah <laughs> she's you know like, like, she gives me great great perspective like i said we're entirely different people yeah. and a lot of the times that may not be advantageous but a lot of the time it is but again it's about get you knowing what you get out of each other she knows what i'm really good at and she knows what i'm rubbish at um likewise i know the same and to have that supportive nate supportive person around you that makes a huge difference um she's not always patient with me um but she's patient with me at the same time you know Sometimes I know on my way home, I'm going to get some stick today. And I full well know that I deserve it as well. Yeah. Um, full well know that I deserve it. And again, when that happens, like we, we said at the beginning of the conversation, you could, sometimes you've got to know when to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. And you've got to know that, right, okay, like I need to listen and not talk because I am in the wrong here. Whereas you're sometimes your emotional um like we were saying your your emotional side comes out and just because she's having a pop yeah you're gonna have a pop back to say well i'm doing this for the family and i'm doing it because i bring the money and i i do this and i do that it's very easy to do that when actually a lot of the time she's coming from a good place like you missed this today you missed bedtime today and they asked about you and like you, you, you know jenna wanted you to read this book for her and you've missed that you know, could you not just finish 20 minutes earlier? And at that time, you know, 
from a selfish perspective, you could be like, well, I've been at work and I've been earning the money and I've been doing this. But actually from a family perspective, it's like, you're right. I could have probably come home 20 minutes earlier and done what I needed to do later on tonight or in the morning. Yeah. The uh, thinking about that 10 year strategy. Yeah. And four. So the uh, two questions really, where is that taking you? Um, and what is the why that makes the, because the, the why will evolve, but what is it now that makes it strong enough for you to do those long hours and keep um, pushing on? I think the why for me is always my family yeah. um, and wanting more for them and wanting better for them. That's my, my biggest why is my family. But in terms of strategy and, and, and where I see an exit, actually, I'm... I like to help people evolve and get better and grow and progress and do better in their careers. Um, I really enjoy that. And I don't know whether that's because I've come from an apprenticeship background and that's kind of the route I was taken on. But I think like, you know, I could probably sit back and have a nice comfortable life and just not grow any business I have. And we'd live in a nice life but i do it because i know that i can build opportunities for other people to give them a fantastic life as well um it's not just about me karen and the kids and my family anymore it's about some of my management team and my employees and their life standards and the opportunities i would like them to have um and you know it's legacy as well you know you you can have the money, but that doesn't, that's, that's not a legacy. You know, I'd love, I will always remember Ian. Ian is the guy that gave me my apprenticeship. Um, you probably could talk to me about him when I'm 60 years old. And I, will, I will never forget him because ultimately he set me into the industry and I'm having, I'm not having the life I have because of him, but he gave me an opportunity into an industry and then I've grown in that industry. And I want to be that for other people. I want people to go, Palm gave us the uh, the foot into that industry and he's, he helped us on the way. He mentored us. You know, ultimately within my businesses, I always see all my team as, as same as I see my children, to try and nurture them, try and get them better. That's my why. I come into work. So I had it last week. Um, Katie, my operations manager, um, we had our video um production team in and <clears throat> she came up to my office and i was like katie have you done the script and she was like yeah i've, I've finished it i've done it downstairs but they said i was robotic and i was like what do you mean and she was like i don't think the the video guys liked the video because they said i was robotic i was like all right sit in my chair and read it to me exactly how you've done downstairs and she was like i'm not doing that i'm embarrassed i was like listen you know how much I charge for coaching. You're about to get a free coaching session. So just like, let's do it. And she was like, cool, okay. And she read it <clears throat> and I was all right, this isn't robotic. You just haven't learned pitching and toning and you don't know when to put your, your stops in. You don't, this this sort of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite your skip, uh, your, 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 your script, and we're gonna put your script in capital letters where you need to high pitch everything else can be normal. I'm going to put three dots where you know you, you need to stop and just have a breather. Yeah. And I want you to go again. And she went again. And I was like, that was much better. And I was like, go back downstairs, tell them you want to re-record that video and do it in that way. And she done that and she come up and she was like, that was brilliant. Even they said that was brilliant. And I was like, so you're not robotic then. You just didn't understand how to do it properly. Um, and I went home that night and I thought, actually, I've spent like maybe half an hour with her and I taught her something, whereas she would have gone home and thought, I'm robotic, I'm rubbish at video, I can't do video. But instead, I wanted to turn that around for her because I know she wasn't rubbish at video. Most people are not. They just haven't been educated on how to do it properly. And I think that's that's my why now is like, well, 
you can come to me and tell me that you can't do it. And what I'd like to do is sit down and understand why you think you can't do it and actually try and help you turn that around. Me, I love that. Um, and resonate with so much of that. It's really, um, it's an evolution of a, a, a leader in ways. You just want to see other people succeed around you. It's, it's, it's um, when you're building your business up at the very beginning, you've, you've, you've got what you need to do. You need to achieve what you need. But yeah. as you evolve, it becomes less about yourself and what you need and actually what those around you it's bring, not, it's bring not about up. Me. It's yeah. not about me at all anymore. Yeah. It's it's never about me. I'm sat here with you. Yeah. I've got seven businesses that I still have to operate yeah. in the background while I'm sat doing whatever I'm doing. So, you know, you come to a certain size in business that it's it's not about you. No. You're just there to head the operations. My job is to ensure that the business operates in the way it needs to operate and put the right people in the right places and take them on a journey to help them get better. And Hopefully, one day I will have, and I do, I have a, ma a fantastic management team, but one day, you know, I say this to some of my top managers, I was like, one day, I hope that we can sit on a yacht in Dubai and we can clink a glass and go, you know what, we made it, we've done it. Yeah. We've done everything we needed to do and we got the exit that we wanted. That's, that's the why, you know, us, all of our families, and that's what it's all about and, and know that. It wasn't easy. We went on the journey together. We made each other better because a lot of the time they're making me better as well. Yeah. They're questioning me because something ain't going right and I'm having to help them with a solution or they're helping me with a solution. But ultimately I want to get to the end and I don't want to be on that yacht by myself. No, you know, nice. I, I want to be with people that I've been on a real hard journey with ups and downs because it's going to be like that and smile and laugh because we done it together. And we've all made what we needed to make an exit and we're all happy. Uh, last question for you. The We've spoken throughout this conversation of a number of times of learning experiences and things that uh, have made a difference in the way that you run your businesses or the way that you approach things. If you were to cherry pick three top pieces of advice that you could give your younger self back when you're sort of 17, 18 and just starting on this journey, what would those pieces of advice be? First one is be prepared to work hard. Yeah. Um, there's no, the, you know, if, if you want to set up a business and you're not prepared to work hard, it's not, it's not going to be successful. Yeah. Um, so hard work is the, my first piece of advice is be prepared for that and make sure you know that you're going to have to do it. There's no way around that. Um, number two is, is about listening and communication. Yeah. Um, listen, listen to the right people, understand who the right people are, have the right people around you. Because like I said, for many years, I, I wasn't listening. Um, I just, I was a bit of a know it all. Um, and I probably would have been way further ahead of where I am now if I had gone back three years prior to that and listened a bit earlier. Um, so li listening is is my number my number two. Um, I could probably reel 10, but number three, <laughs> um, I think it would be having a game plan is strategy. Um, knowing, you know, having a proper strategy, just to not just, because the problem is if you don't have a strategy, it's open-ended and open-ended things are never really that good because you actually don't know where you're going and there's no destination. You have to have a destination and you have to be fixated on that des destination because when that low time comes, that dark time comes, to be able to crawl out of that, you got to know where you're headed. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to get out of that. So strategy is my, my number three. So hard work, listen, and strategize is, is, my, is my top three. Brilliant. Well, it's been fantastic chatting with you. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed watching this interview. Please remember to hit subscribe and like. It really helps us with the algorithms for YouTube and I'll look forward to bringing you more interviews in the next episode of Drive, the small business podcast from UKBF.